Hand rendering jewelry has long tradition in the jewelry design history. Hi, I'm PJ Chen. Today, I'm going to guide you through the step-by-step -step process of how to paint the turquoise rope design pendant in this tutorial. Let's get started. First, we will talk about the material. Then I will draw some simple structure of how light and shadow is working. Then I will give you a live demo with fast forward speed to show you how it is done. The paper I'm using is 100 pound Bristol pad. It doesn't matter what brand you're using. I've been using a couple of those. Um, you can pick whichever one that fit for you. The watercolor I use is Windsor & Newton Common Watercolors. It is a pocket box and it comes with 12 very basic color and that's what you need for this tutorial. You will also need an automatically pencil, an eraser. The brush I'm using is Princeton Art & Brush number 6. Chinese calligraphy brush and my favorite Windsor & Newton Fine Sable Series 7 number 1 brush Fine point pen a 2B pencil and also a pencil stump You will need an opaque white color for the highlight I use Copic opaque white Let's talk about the difference between opaque and transparent. Um, this is my last tutorial talking about how to draw a transparent stone. And then you can um, look at the uh, video that I posted last time at a link here. This is the structure for drawing the uh, transparent stone as I highlight the, where the spot and the light and dark area should be. Let's take a look how we are going to draw an uh, opaque stone. Here's the structure. Let's draw a really quick oval first. Assuming the light is coming from 45 degree left top corner. And this is the reflection from the surface. So it will be the white color. We want to wash out white color. On the right bottom corner, it will be the dark area. So we will put some um, darker tone with the same color we're using. I'm going to use a oval template. I'm just going to pick a size for my stone. And I also like to draw um, a ring around it is because that's usually how they hold a stone with the bezel. So it doesn't have to be too big, but it's some sort of like a, a 20 gauge or 0.8 millimeter thickness. And then I'm going to pick a frame. That is where the uh, rope chain is going to be. And be careful, I want to draw this one really, really light because we don't want a pencil mark showing. Uh, on our uh, yellow gold. So I want to draw it really, really light. This is just for a reference. And I'm going to fast forward here to quickly uh, to finish this, this part. Basically, I divided them and draw them in certain angle. This is a three time fast forward. Um, as you can see, I tried to even it out, just eyeball it. If you do have a certain design, you can actually divide them um, first to make sure that they're coming into the same size. Uh, I also try to erase the larger uh, oval that I had it's because I want to put a little very nice curve finish at the end and I do not want to see that straight line here. So if the line I was drawing uh, previously was too uh, heavy, you may see it here. So let's go ahead and finish this with nice edge right there. And then I like to put a jump ring on the top. Make sure that jump ring is a reasonable size. Most likely it will be a 20 gauge, which is like 0.8 millimeter. Uh, when you draw the jump ring, make sure that consider the uh, thickness on the bell. 
let's start with the opaque stone turquoise the turquoise here is some sort of like greenish and bluish color so i mix both color plus a lot of white color to make it light and then um, on the right bottom corner i try to add the same color just a little bit black the trick is you need to work while it is wet so uh, you won't see the brush mark on it try not to use too much water because bridgestone pad doesn't take a lot of water I add a little bit black color on this side and it's kind of smooth it out so it's giving more dimension. We are going to put the stone aside and talking about the structure of the rope. Basically the rope structure look like this. I'm going to simply just draw some structure like twisting rope here. Assuming light again is from the left top corner. And when the light hitting in this metal, where on the right bottom area will be the dark area. And in that dark area, on the bottom will be darker area. So I'm going to do a really quick color sample right here to show how it's working in yellow gold color. First of all, we are going to paint entire rope with yellow color. After that, on the right bottom corner, I'm going to add a little bit darker brownish color on all four of them. Make sure it's dry in between the paint. After that, we're going to apply even darker brown color. Make sure all the ink are dry, then we can put the highlight on it. I will use the Copic white color, apply in the left top corner. And I also will use the pen to emphasize on the right bottom area. So that will make it more three dimension. Now our turquoise stone is completely dry. We want to do on the left top corner is wash out white color. This is the reflection on the surface. After that, we can start doing the texture. The texture is really organic, so just be creative, but try not to overdo it. And I would like to just put on the right bottom corner, and I'm using the black color. After that, it, when it gets dry, we can put the really highlight white, pure white color on it. Now we finish the turquoise stone, we want to start working on the metal part. Right here, we are going to paint it into the yellow color. So at first, you will use the yellow color to paint over entirely. Try not to use too much water because we want it to look um, like metal. So we need to have a very solid color. Now everything is done. Let's take a look on our structure again. When we draw this structure, everything on the left top corner is white, on the right bottom corner is dark. So it doesn't matter how you rotate it, it will apply in this way. So when we apply on it, just make sure that all the dark it's going to go into the right bottom area. First, let's paint a brownish color. And I will follow the shape and paint it only on close to the right bottom area. And I will repeat that for all the area on the right. While it is rotated to the top, we are going to paint in more of the right area on each section. And you can see what I'm trying to do here is try to stay on the right bottom area 
Even though I turn into the left side, I still stay in the right bottom area. And remember, before you put another coat of the ink, you need to make sure it is dry. The bell in the middle is a little bit higher, so ideally on the right side will be a little bit darker. Let's take a look on the jumping structure. This is represent like the jumping. So when the light coming from the left top corner, the inside of the jumping on the left side will be darker while outside of the jumping on the right side will be darker. So let's move it back to this pen. We're gonna use a really fine brush to paint it inside and outside in that brown color. Also, we need to work on this um, bezel here. It apply the same principle like jumping. Once it's dry, we're going to put the darker brown color and make sure the area is the darker brown color is really fine. It's not covered the previous brown, lighter brown color there. And again, we are applying into the right bottom area, but within that previous brown color. And once again, make sure the um, previous color is dry. Otherwise, it's going to get really muddy looking. I'm also going to do the top and again the darker brown color shouldn't cover and tie of a lighter brown color. It should be just accent. And use a really fine tip. Make sure it's really steady to go on the rim which is the bezel. When it, once it is done, make sure it is dry before we can put the highlight on it. Our highlight will go on each section on the left top corner. And then the highlight on the jump ring will go opposite than the black. At final, I will use a really fine pen to work on the outline to make emphasize on some of the line. I will do that more on the right side compared to the left side, so it will give it more dimension. To make my stone pop up more, I would like to give a defined line right at the right bottom area. I don't make entire oval, just on the right bottom area. Now I want to use super pure white and just put tiny dot on each of them to make them really pop as metal. Final. I'm going to use 2B pencil to do the shadow. Basically, 2B is really soft, so you just need to follow the shape. Uh, make sure you are not completely touching the um, metal there. Then I will use the stump to um, blend it out, the shadows, for you to look more natural. I hope you enjoyed the video for rope design turquoise pendant with the traditional watercolor paint rendering. Please like, comment, and share my video that helped me to create more free video for you. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.